Today I'm in Boulder, Montana to visit the Free Enterprise Radon Health Mine. And you're thinking, well, what's radon? Radon's a radioactive gas. And now you're probably thinking, well, <laughs> what's healthy about a radioactive gas? Well, it can actually be a form of pain relief for people that suffer from arthritis and rheumatism or migraines or asthma. It's a form of radiation therapy. And it's a form of radiation therapy that only exists in one state in the United States, and that's in Montana. So this makes Montana kind of unique, and it's the only state that allows people of their own free will to choose how to treat their pain by going down and breathing a radioactive gas. Here's the background radiation for reference in the parking lot of the Radon Health Mine. It's slightly higher due to the uranium in the ground. Originally, this was a uranium mine, but after some visitors to the mine started feeling better, presumably from the radon gas, more people wanted to see for themselves. So in 1952, the owners repurposed this uranium mine into a radon health mine. There are other radon health mines in the area with different concentrations of radon. People have come from all over the world to visit the radon health mine and have been doing so for quite some time, seeking a way to alleviate their pain and inflammation. A short elevator trip down, and you find yourself 87 feet underground, in the first level of this radon health mine. This is a level that has been made safe for people to visit and enjoy radon therapy. Radon gas and water are pumped out of the lower levels of the radon health mine and brought to the surface, where people can take home radon-infused water now that may sound a little strange for people to drink water that is infused with radon, but they say that drinking the radon water actually gives people the same effect as breathing the radon gas. Radon gas doesn't have an odor to it. It's one of the noble gases, so it doesn't react with anything else. So the Free Enterprise Radon Health Mine has created a nice little environment down in the mine for people to experience radon therapy. Uh, they have uh, chairs and tables, uh, lazy boys and uh, bench seats all up and down the mine for people to hang out and to just uh, experience the radon therapy. And so it's nice to see a place that they've tried to make as cozy as possible because most people think, you know, a mine isn't very cozy, but they've made it uh, very well lit and they have uh, Wi-Fi down here. So you actually be on your phone or computer or uh, doing work remotely while experiencing radon uh, therapy. Certain uranium deposits will glow a bright green when exposed to ultraviolet light. This uranium deposit in the mine is what creates the radon gas through radioactive decay. You can actually see the path the uranium deposit takes through the rock. So I'm down in the warming room of the Free Enterprise right on Health Mine. This is an area that has been made to be warmer than the rest of the mine. The mine is usually around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty chilly for a lot of people. But in here, it's around 60 degrees Fahrenheit because they have a heater and a, a plastic uh, a veil over the door. So that kind of traps the heat in here. And so a lot of people come to hang out in this area of the mine that uh, Either they didn't bring a jacket or, uh, you know, that 45 degrees just got a little too much bite on it for them. Another cool thing about the Free Enterprise Radon right Health Mine is the customer graffiti. And basically on every wooden surface down in the mine, uh, there are people signing their names, letting others know who came here before them. And they usually put like a date and where they came from. And so it's an interesting tapestry of the history of this place. This room is for people that don't want to go down into the mine. Radon is pumped from the lower levels into this room for people to sit, relax, and enjoy. Now, there are other radon health mines in the world. There are radon health mines actually in Austria that have existed for over 100 years. 
uh, back in the day, they, um, you know, back before the discovery of radon and radiation and radioactivity, uh, they discovered that there were mines and caves that when people went into that had arthritis or all types of other ailments, that they actually experienced a form of pain relief from being down in these areas. And it wasn't until later after the discovery of uh, radioactivity and radium and radon that they uh, put those two together and realized that people were experiencing this pain relief because of the radiation that they were absorbing, which is a very low dose of radiation. In here right now, the radiation on my Geiger counter is around, let's see here, just needs to level out a little bit. I'm gonna turn off the clicker here so you can actually hear me talk. But I'm getting around 1200 to 1300 counts per minute. And that's pretty low. And I've been down in here uh, before uh, with this not in a bag. And it was giving me around five to 6,000 counts per minute. And the reason why it's less right now is because all the uh, alpha particles from the radon gas isn't able to penetrate this plastic bag. And so it cuts down a lot on the radiation uh, that's detected. Um, and then the reason why I have this in a bag to begin with is so it doesn't become contaminated by the radon daughters that are in this mine. Uh, the radon daughters are actually other elements that uh, radon turns into after it emits its uh, radiation. Uh, and those are negatively charged and so they will actually kind of stick to this and to myself uh, and emit radiation for about 24 hours after uh, I'm outside of this environment uh, until they decay away into a more stable form of lead which is still radioactive but it's it's very low energy and uh, usually if I wanted to decontaminate this or myself I just have to wipe this down and wipe off the detector and uh, it would be fine. Uh, same with yourself. You would be fine too if you just took a shower and washed your clothes. Uh, you know, this isn't uh, hurtful in any way. So I just got out of the radon health mine and my Geiger counter is reading about 280 right now. 280 counts per minute. But when I put it onto my shirt here, getting around 3,000 now. 2,500 counts per minute. And it's just from the radioactive particles stuck to my shirt. This was a look at how radon could be beneficial to some. Now we're going to go somewhere where I would consider it to be a little bit dangerous. Out here at the Mavita mine in uh, Utah near Moab and this mine is kind of interesting and uh, it's interesting in that it contaminates you when you walk inside and uh, I'm not sure if I feel up to it today so uh, I think I'm gonna stay out of there today did fly the drone around so you kind of get an idea of what it looks like um, maybe next time I'll uh, cruise in there and uh, get myself dusted. I was just kidding. I'm gonna go in there. Um, I am a little apprehensive about it because uh, I am going to get contaminated with um, radioactive particles. But those particles decay away in about uh, 24 hours. Um, so it's not so bad. I am going to be wearing a mask so I don't breathe those particles in. Now, it is important to understand the difference of a mine like this versus 
the radon health mine in Montana. The level of radon and radon decay products that are coming out of this mine just in the air is massively different compared to the radon health mine and then the radon that you would find in your home. But we'll see if this uh, does what I think it's gonna do. There's a bunch of bugs around here. But uh, so to get an idea, the background right here I'm getting is 350 counts per minute. So you can hear it, there's contamination in this whole area. My clothes right now, nothing. So we'll see if that's totally different when I come out. I'm gonna to have to put this in a plastic bag because I, if I bring it in there, it'll be useless. It'll be showing a super high reading no matter where I am. So I don't want that. So uh, let's go inside and check it out. Getting to the portal of a mine. Yeah, it's definitely going up. Hopefully I don't see any snakes. Yeah, I can feel that air. The air is totally clear. It's cool. Yeah, it's super radioactive. Well, you're going to need 26, 23,000 counts per minute. I'm looking out. Support. I'm going to cut this off so I can talk for a second. Okay, so there's a cool current of air coming out. It's totally clean. I can't see anything in the air. It looks totally fine. I would not think anything of this mine if I was in here just exploring. I wouldn't think anything about this mine. But it's contaminating me right now and my camera because of the radon daughter products that are in the air right now. So these tiny particles of dust are adhering to me right now and they're emitting energy. I will for about 24 hours. And I wouldn't know this unless I had a Geiger counter with me. So let's turn this one back on. And let's uh, see what it's telling us here. Because it sounds like there's some pretty hot stuff around here. Yep. It seems like a piece of ore, but... I pulled stuff out of here where it wasn't. Looks like it's going to be 90, 90 counts per minute. All right, I think I'm going to head out now and grab this uh, rock that's on the ground because it's here. Well, I'll see you uh, see outside. Ugh. All right. Got a little sample here. Got it super bright. Okay, I'm outside of the mine now. The Geiger counter is still going off. I'm going to take this mask off now. Alright, I'm going to put this mask down. Yeah, it's still reading really hot right now. So now it's outside of that bag, my Geiger counter. It's almost reading back to background, but now, eh, not as bad as I thought it would be, actually. Definitely contamination. Looks like it's lower. Getting about 11,000, 11,000 counts per minute. Twelve thousand counts per minute. Yeah, I mean there is a difference there.
So, I gotta wash my hands. <laughs> Let's put it that way. My fingertips are 13,000 counts per minute. And it's, I think it's because I picked up that rock and it had that radioactive dust on it. So, wow. <laughs> I have to show you my mask. Gain 65,000 counts per minute. Hopefully you can see that. So, the radioactive particles that were in the air was stopped by this filter. Probably not all of it. I did probably breathe in some of it, but this filter probably helped me a lot. So I just changed out of my shirt here, the one I was wearing. That's giving me around 28, 27, 29,000 counts per minute. Hopefully you can see that. That's insane. But in a day, this shirt should be fine. It shouldn't be radioactive anymore. So it's been about 24 hours now and this shirt has had some time to calm down a bit. So now the radioactivity is far less and it is pretty much background. And that's because of the daughter products that have decayed away into a more stable form of lead, which is still radioactive but is a much longer half-life of around 22 years. So there's still radioactive isotopes on here, it's just not nearly as active as they once were. down in this crawl space to briefly talk about residential radon and right here I have a, a radon meter that uh, it detects uh, radon gas and it uses uh, picocuries per liter as, of air as a form of measurement and down here I'm getting around uh, 18 picocuries per liter of air and a pico is one trillionth of a part so it's very very small and uh, you know I mean it's something that it doesn't even really affect my Geiger counter uh, down here, you know. In the Free Enterprise Radon Health Mine, this was giving me around uh, five to 6,000 counts per minute uh, without it in a bag. And at the Mavita Mine, it was giving me around, um, you know, uh, like 35,000 to 80,000 counts per minute in a plastic bag. Uh, but down here, you know, it's giving me you know, between uh, 50 and uh, 70 counts per minute and normal background is uh, 35 counts per minute. And so the level of radiation exposure from residential radon is extremely low. And it shouldn't really be something that is, um, you know, feared. Uh, they say to mitigate your home if it's at uh, four picocuries per liter of air of uh, radon is detected. And that's an extremely small amount of radon compared to all these other places that I've showed you. And so it's something that, um, you know, I mean, if, if you're honestly scared of, of radon and radiation, then, then yeah, go ahead, get a, get radon mitigation and pay those thousands of dollars. And, you know, you have that peace of mind, but, um, it'd be better to understand, uh, radiation and radon and the effects it has on the body instead of just, uh, you know, uh, subscribing to that fear of uh, an element that uh, I think they're really trying to sell people on. This is like the lowest level of radon that you can possibly find is in the residential, you know, um, areas. 
Uh, and then the health mines in Montana, the radon health mines in Montana, that's uh, much higher. And then the then there's like the Mavita mine and different uranium mines, which have extremely high levels of radon, which, you know, those are what I would consider to be a dangerous level of radon. If you were going to be down there uh, day in and day out mining and uh, working as a miner, then yeah, that would be a dangerous level of radon if they didn't ventilate the mine. And then also, as I understand it, the miners that did get cancer, like lung cancer down there, uh, that they said was caused from radon, they were also, a lot of them were smokers. And so it's, you know, I think a lot of people that are getting uh, lung cancer that uh, didn't smoke uh, in their homes and they blame it on radon. I think it's actually more from chemical exposure or from secondhand smoke or, uh, you know, or bad air quality. You know, it really depends on a lot of factors. And to say that it's just radon, it just doesn't seem like a, a very, like, kind of genuine uh, way of presenting the facts. And that's what I'm hoping this video does, is it kind of, you know, opens your eyes to, uh, you know, more information and how, uh, you know, radon is all around us and, you know, radiation is all around us. And it's not something that should be feared. It should be something that's understood. I understand that's really hard to do with an energy that you can't see, you can't smell it. You can only detect it with certain uh, equipment. And if it's high enough, it can kill you. And and so I understand the fear of that, uh, but it's it's something that can be understood and I think if it's understood, it could be a lot more beneficial to people than if it's feared. You know, maybe radon therapy is for you. Maybe it isn't. The, the effect that radiation has on every person is kind of different. Um, you know, some people uh, are affected by it uh, a lot easier than others. And, you know, so maybe radon therapy isn't for you. But if you are suffering from any of those uh, ailments, it might be something to try. Because the people that I've run into that have... Uh, told me about their stories about, uh, you know, suffering from arthritis and, you know, all kinds of other things. And then going down and breathing that radon gas, they definitely seem to have some type of pain relief from, uh, going down there and doing that. And, you know, it's, it's something to investigate further. And I feel like, um, you know, everyone's so wrapped up in radon causing lung cancer that no one wants to investigate, uh, the benefits of radon or that it could have some type of benefit. I hope you learned something. If you did, uh, please like or subscribe to this channel. I plan on uh, releasing a lot more videos about uh, radiation, radioactivity, and uh, different things that I do find out in the field because I find all types of objects, uh, places that are radioactive that people have no idea are. And so um, it should be a fun journey and I'm hoping that um, I get some more people to follow me on it. So um, Take it easy. Hope you learned something. See you next time.